I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bones Live, and it's Saturday, which means... And now it's time for another episode of Blogger's Corner with Britt. Blogger's Corner with Britt. Welcome to the show again, Britt. Thanks for having me. Well, right on. So first off, um, we were, well, I guess, well, I was under the impression that uh, this week's era was a finale, but it's not. Apparently, there's one more episode to go. And, you know, the first little bit was pretty good, and then it kind of tapered off a little bit. I mean, I, I like the the fact that you know, like, you know, there's gonna be this all all uh, battle, and uh, you know, obviously the opening scene is uh, Laurel and, uh, and Errol b- below the rubble trying to get out, and then the one thing that got me is like I talked about just before we got on the air here was the fact that there was uh, some we'll call it cheesy like one liners and with with a, with a push voice and it kind of made me chuckle, and uh, <laughs> one of the ones. It was uh, the return of Malcolm Merlin. <laughs> like, who are you? Oh, yeah. I'm her father. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no sh- well, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, that was very corny. So, yeah, <laughs> I saw that. I started, I started laughing with that one. But, I mean, it was, it, I mean, it's good. But you kind of expected that they need to bring him back. And that being said, chances are Thea's probably not going anywhere anytime soon. No, I think her position is pretty safe. I also had to laugh that, you know, the quote-unquote world is coming to an end and she's, you know, having daddy-daughter issues. You're not my father! Right. Really? <laughs> yeah, I don't want anything to do with you. Do you understand? Blah, blah. And, of course, he saves her once again. Like, <laughs> Of course. Yeah. yeah, he's a very exciting character. I'm excited. I think they waited too long to explore this whole arc. Well, yeah, I mean, you're right, but I mean, at least they're kind of uh, bringing him back at an opportune time because, I mean, I mean, you got to expect that obviously, even though this is not the end, there's going to be a lot more people involved. And now the fact that they have the cure from the Mirror Crew and now Blood, and then, of course, Amir Blood saying, well, you know what? You were right. I should listen to you the first time around. <laughs> Again, there, there's another no brainer right there, you know? Exactly. And why did Oliver struggle to get the Amirakuru, um, you know, this whole serum. He didn't want to put it on Roy, and then the last minute he realizes things are so dire, so he jabs a shirtless Roy with the serum. I mean, you, why didn't you do that two minutes ago? Well, exactly. You're the whole thing. Do we have enough venom to keep him down? Only enough for a few <laughs> hours. You know, it's like, all right. <laughs> but, you know what? <laughs> at, least, at least they played on Felicity a lot more this time around. And, uh... <laughs> you know, her 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 corny but funny one liners. If you guys come back dead, I'm gonna be really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so good, and I really did enjoy all of her scenes and seeing her elevated to a, a you know a more prominent level in this episode. My own my thing wasn't with Felicity when Felicity was giving her speech. Just heart, just like wow, this is right from the heart. Felicity's pouring herself out to old Oliver, and then he looked behind her shoulder and I thought there was going to be like an assailant come to attack her no he just was looking off they're in the middle of this incredible moment and he breaks eye contact for what they need to completely reshot that if someone like walked in behind a crew member that should have been that just completely threw off my focus yeah you know what I agree with that you know usually that's that's a lead up to something but in this case it wasn't so <clears throat> Other than some will call them, I don't know if you want to really call them discrepancies, but it, it wasn't it wasn't as bad as an episode, you know. But it's still not one of those ones where you're like, whoa, hey, you know, <laughs> because you kind of you kind of expecting what happens. I mean, on their on their race to the bridge, you you had to know that someone's going to get in the way. You know, they're not going to make the bridge that easily. Oh, exactly. And another thing was when um, Summer Lau's character, who I can never remember her name, but she was beating, you know, on Diggle, and then Felicity came and hit her with the car, and then he said, go, 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 and Diggle got inside. I thought they were going to run her over again, and then they just went the opposite way. Exactly, and, uh, uh it just, it is one of those things. I mean, they did a little bit better this episode, but the finale better be something else. I agree, and it kind of, for me, retreaded last season, Starling 
the city or, you know, the, 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 the whole place is under attack. And I kind of want to get away from constantly having this apocalyptic ending. Uh, you know, I wanted, I thought it was going to be a little, something different this time. And it, it really hasn't been any different. Oh, yeah, it, it, right. I mean, it just, I don't know. I mean, they, they have to do something a little bit more. I mean, this, this battle has got to be one hell of a battle to get people's interest back in, really kind of, quote, quote, quote back into the game. Oh, I absolutely agree. And it, 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 um, I think they showed it in the preview, but everyone kind of coming together. And how lame was it when Sarah, who came back out of nowhere, goes into the building after it exploded three times, and you know the the person inside was still alive, and she comes out, and everyone's like, "She, wow, who was that?" Yeah, exactly. That's a canary. I was like, "Oh boy, really?" <laughs> <laughs> All, all of a sudden, Laurel's all into the fact that her sister's the, the canary, right? So, yes, and she's what? A, it's a beautiful name for a beautiful hero. I'm like, okay, just calm yourself down. This is just not that profound. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, and it, it just, I just like the whole, like the whole thing again. I didn't think it was necessary. I'm maybe it was a little bit for for Laurel's sake, but the whole, uh, no, Sarah breakdown. I'm not the person I used to be. I'm called this. What does it mean? It means the canary. It's like, oh boy. <laughs> so, like, right. I agree. So, like, kind of let's fast forward through this and get to the important stuff, you know? Like, exactly. It was like Thea having her dad daughter reunion moment amidst all this chaos. Uh, there are more important things going on right now, Sarah. And plus, they did give, I am glad they gave Laura a little bit of her brain back because she was finally able to recognize her sister in a blonde wig when she has blonde hair and looks exactly like herself. She's very distinctive. So, how she wasn't able to pick out. Her sister earlier made her look like a complete dummy. Yeah, and, uh, and they, 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 because it's one of those things to know they, they'll, they'll probably, if, the, let's say the producers were questioning it all, they can chalk it up to, well, oh, no, she was messed up for a while, alcoholic, pills, blah, blah, blah. That's probably why she didn't recognize them. Even, even when people can be that messed up, you know, if, if it's, it's usually, it's usually them not being recognized, not the family members, right? So, right. So, I mean, it just, uh, it's just one of those things. Like, you know, it wasn't bad, and I mean, I wasn't. I wouldn't say I was completely impressed, but you know, I was glad to see they took a little bit more of initiative this time. But they still got to go just a little bit further to make it uh, worthwhile because they want people to be watching next season and be and be hooked on it. So, I absolutely agree, and I hope that the next episode is big. I hope they kind of get the battle out. Like in the first half, because we've been doing all the lead up in this whole episode, do the battle and then set up for what the big conflict's going to be in the next season. Exactly, and it's one of those things too. I just I don't know. Um, I mean, I mean, there's there's obviously there's spoilers and stuff online. I haven't looked at any of those. I don't plan to either. But uh, it's one of those things where. Um, well, no, will Slade make it to the next season? And no, no, is he going to die? It's like, I don't know. Chances are probably not because they still need a villain. And Blood's not big enough of a villain to uh, keep things going. At least, yeah, at least and they not... completely wasted him. Well, exactly. At least at least not anymore. I think, I think next season, um, probably, or at least more than likely, uh, is going ha to have something to do with, uh, with Oliver's kid. The only, oh. the only question being is, in the comic, it's a boy, but since it's a TV show, are they going to switch it to being a girl? Ooh. Right? I mean, anything's possible. It's a... I would really, I think that would be really cool. I'm wondering, because the kid's going to probably be pretty young, I do think that they'll play her Know much about the mom of the kid so is she good is she bad, bad who is she her whole story will probably or maybe you know figure into all of that well exactly and the other thing is too is right now i mean at least supposedly where it stands is i think this this kid whether it be boy or girl is probably gonna be at least seven years old okay so from what from what i know like i mean at least if, it, if it's gonna follow the comic book the kid should be about seven by now all right. Well, because plus remember too, they did the flashback like years ago when he told his mom, you know, I got a kid and or I got I got a girl pregnant, blah blah. So I mean, quite a number of years passed because you know he did go to the island a little bit after that. So I'm guessing. Oh, I'm gonna guess if they fall correctly. The kid's gonna be at least about seven years old. Yeah, he'll be youngish. Yeah, and here's something. Yeah, I totally agree with you. He will definitely be young. Here's something else to think about too. 
Now, uh, when they showed Laurel and Thea, I mean, I know Roy was injected uh, the last, like, few minutes, or, like, what, last five minutes of the episode. Uh, so he's still in the picture. But here's something else to think about. It could be just the producer messing with people's head. But uh, what, do you remember what color uh, jacket or and or sweater that Laurel and Thea were both wearing? Yep. Uh, red. Aha. And what could that possibly be? <laughs> could it, could, could. Thea or Laurel could be end up being uh, being the Red Arrow. Ding. Okay, try that one more time, Britt. You cut out. Okay, I, I just said that was very and it's a very interesting, you know, idea and notion. It very well could play out that way. I'm um, kind of at this point. Like a little, there's so many superheroes already on the show. I'm kind of wondering if I definitely think they have to get rid of one of them when's currently on the show to make room. If that happens, I think you're definitely picking up correctly on an anvil. Well, it's 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 possible. Like I said, I, I don't I don't have any any solid proof that's going to happen. But you know, it could go either way. Laurel's cleaned up now. No, Speedy's kind of still in the picture and. It just it's just it's just a possibility. I mean Roy could be a way they could get a, get Roy permanently. I don't know exactly how yet and what they would do, but there's that possibility. Yeah, he might not make it through his, you know, serum. And by the way, why can't they put a shirt on him? He is <laughs> like I mean, really? He's probably gonna get he's already, you know, unconscious. He's gonna get cold. Just put his shirt on. I don't see any medical value to having him not wearing a shirt. It's not as I, I definitely don't believe it's medical at all. Because think of it this way, and this is not a bias, not a slight, uh, anything like that. But to all the female viewers, even though Roy, like I, I'm, I'm, com I'm comfortable enough to say Roy's not a bad looking guy. He's not a ten, but he, he's not, he's not a bad looking guy, but. You know, for the female viewership, it's probably one of the reasons the shirt's off. I see. I mean, it, it, it's the same sort of thing with, I mean, Oliver's not all the time, but, you know, Oliver's a pretty decent looking guy too, and he's pretty muscular as well. So, you know, I mean, that, they got to, it's, it's, you mean, know, both female males watch show, obviously, but, you know, they got to apply, they got to, they got to apply certain things to, to the people who are, who are watching, and we're watching the show, right? So, I'm I'm assuming this. I don't know this for a fact, but I would assume that that's uh, that would that'd be part of the thing. Is it somewhat of appeal to the females? Like, oh, he's under the cover, but he's so hot. You know. <laughs> so. <laughs> I definitely think you're onto something with that, and I'm not trying to take any of the ladies, you know, eye candy away. It's just for me, it kind of needs to be natural when something like that is so just blatantly in there just to show off some eye candy it really takes me out of any kind of reality i know we're doing with arrow and this is a sci-fi show but for me even then it's just like okay everyone else is clothed and there he is on a slat uh, with his shirt <laughs> off and really <laughs> well you know what you know what? I, I i agree with you i mean i didn't see the significance to it significance to it either but you know like i think and like I said, that's just a guess. I mean, I and I'm, I'm just I'm just guessing that that's a reason why, but it, it could very well be completely insignificant in 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 total. But it just a, just a thought. <clears throat> I mean, but in the same time too is like you know when I, I'm I'm watching for content, and just because uh, uh, a woman is good looking doesn't mean I'm gonna watch the entire show or movie. I mean, I the, it, <clears throat> if if the person is not a good if if she's not a the, the the actress is not a good actress, then I'm not gonna watch. I mean, I'm not gonna watch a stupid movie for for a uh, for a good looking woman. You know, like <laughs> that's a total waste of time for me personally. I totally agree with you. I think that there is no substance, and you know, I mean, you don't have anything there. It just looks worse. You you see this person, and you just becomes even more blatant that you know that they're just there because they're attractive and they can act. And I 
would prefer someone with some talent than to just watch someone um, pose and strike, a, you know, and yeah. model the whole time. <laughs> Well, and, that, and that's the thing is too, is because uh, don't get me wrong, I do think a Felicity is a really good, a, a really good uh, uh, looking woman, but you know she's got substance to her character. You no, know? she's a she's a good actress. She's got she's got the nerdy, but she's got the kind of the, the smart ass appeal to her. You no, know? so it's and I'm not watching the show specifically for her. It helps, but at least she's a decent actress. At least it's not like one of those ones. She's good looking, just kind of dumber than a box of rocks, and kind of just thrown in for 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 the quote unquote sex appeal. You know. I totally agree with you, and that's one of the reasons I really like the character, and I think she's really versatile, because sometimes she can really geek it up, and then she glams it up, and so she is someone who has a lot of substance and is fun to watch outside of just, you see her, and it's va va boom, you're like, wow, look at that, she is gorgeous, and then she doesn't always playing that card, you know? Well, and that's right, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, uh, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily sexist, but at the same time, too, I mean, you know, I mean... Obviously, like you're talking about the female, female viewership too. I know, uh, no, the guy's good looking too. But I'm sure there's a lot of people on the same page uh, on the female side saying, you know, what? he may be very good looking, but his his acting abilities are horrible, and the guy in real life is not exactly that bright. So, what am I going to watch and waste my time? I have been there many times. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. It goes that. it goes both ways. You know, it's not it's not just one. It's not a one sided coin when it comes to that. At least not anymore. It's not so. Totally agree. So we'll hope for uh, uh, a decent, uh, more than decent finale because they, they kind of did some good lead ups, you know. But they, they they're really gonna to really kind of blow this thing out of the water. They're gonna they're gonna have to you know I'll call it, uh, pull out the big guns, meaning like you no, know, they're really gonna have to make um, uh, uh, Malcolm like really you know be a, a strong force in this. They're gonna have to bring back. Uh, <sighs> help me out here, Britt. What's that? What's that uh, group of guys like the Death Row guys that are. Uh, the suicide squad. A suicide squad. Thank you. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised the suicide squad comes into play as well. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, anticipating them showing up at some point in this episode, and I was kind of disappointed they didn't. Well, maybe leaving it for the last, for the last episode, which would be a very smart idea, just because you know they were cool the first time they were in it, and I don't know about you or anybody else, but I would like to see uh, more of their presence in this one. Oh, me too. I think that would be really awesome. Now, I kept thinking that uh, that they would show up, like you said, and uh, that one guy in particular, whose name was escaping me. The Deadshot? Uh, yeah, Deadshot, thank you. Uh, I thought he... At one point, in fact, the body language of one of the... I thought that he might have taken over one of the Marikuru guys I... in the game, but then that not being true, and I realized my imagination was getting ahead of me. <laughs> Well, you know what? The thing is, the good thing about them is, obviously, since they have nothing to lose, then you know they're going to put up more of a fight. Despite these uh, Mirakuru guys being like a uh, beyond human strength. Yeah, that has gotten a little bit tiring for me because I want to see that the nemesis be really um, flesh and blood, and they're fighting for something too. And when it's just another faceless body flung it and one another, it kind of loses all of the appeal. And not only that, you know, it just, you're right, it, it gets boring. There, there has to be a weakness besides a cure. Yes. Because for no matter who you are or no matter what character they, they put up there, whether good, good or evil, there are there are weaknesses we a weakness or weaknesses plural right there's got to be because <clears throat> that's part of that's part of the part of the game a part of the show sort of thing and uh, so it's got there's got to be some form of weakness somewhere obviously Oliver has his Diggle has his you no know, that sort of thing you know so there's there's got to be something so there's got to be some weakness that's going to be exposed I would hope at least I mean to really make this like a kind of stellar finish like they're gonna have to they're gonna have to step it up just a little bit. I totally agree with you. And what is the, you know, do you think there was going to be another death before, you know, during the finale? See, I don't know. I mean, they, you know, they're leading up to it, of course, you know, like uh, Slade told Oliver and I told, you no, know, one more person has to die, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to push my voice some more and try to look, <laughs> bad, try to look bad as hell. So, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean... I, I have a feeling that it might come close, but there'll be like a kind of cliffhanger save at the last minute. Ah, uh, yeah. So at least at least I at least I would hope so. But I mean, the way things are kind of rolling here, I'm kind of, that's kind of exactly what I'm expecting is a, a cliff a cliffhanger save at the last minute. 
Yeah, I definitely agree. Whose life do you think it will be in jeopardy? I think Floyd's going to go after, uh, it's got, it's got to be a uh, Laurel or Sarah. Because, what's that, sorry? Totally agree. So, I mean, just because, like, you know. I, said I totally agree with you. All right, I know, I know, right. So, yeah, so, and, and it's got to it's gotta be something like that because, um, you know, Thea's becoming a bigger part, but she's not quite big. And since he and Sarah are together on the island, I would think in Slade's mind, like, you know, that uh, I'm going to go after, uh, I'm going to go after Sarah and kill her off and we're all good and we're all settled sort of thing. I, I definitely think that's where it's headed. I totally agree with you. Because that's the only person that, that's the person that Oliver chose over Shadow, as ridiculous as that whole point of the story is. So I definitely, I, I can't believe that he didn't come after Sarah sooner. I don't really get the mechanics behind that, but I definitely think she'll be the one in Jeopardy. And, you know, I, if, if they knock her off, eh, not, not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> I will not miss her at all. And actually, just speaking of Shadow... Mary, uh, it's probably just over halfway through the episode where uh, Slade is talking to, I don't remember her name. He's like, oh, Shadow would have loved this. Who's Shadow? <laughs> like, you know, like, here we go again. <laughs> yes, I know. Who is Sh I was thinking the same thing. Who is Shadow to him? He needs to get the heck over it. <laughs> exactly. So this this guy is just severely brainwashed and, and, uh, yeah, so that's that's the thing. It's gonna keep bringing her like, well, who is she? You know, it's it's like, it's like. Uh, I mean, even though you saw a character, it's like some of these TV shows where always you about this character, but you never actually see them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know who this who this person is. So. <laughs> I know you have to see it from the very beginning to have any idea who this person is. That's right. So I just I just thought I'd bring that up just because I just thought of that now, and I was like, oh yeah, there's another cheesy moment right there. Good call. So, um, we'll hope, like I said, we'll hope for a, a, a better finish uh, next week, a uh, better finale. So, we're going to move on to a little bit of rock news here, um, or just popular mainstream. Good old Chris Brown is going to spend another uh, 131 more days in jail. And Yay! Yeah, yeah, exactly. Obviously, most people believe he deserves more, and he could have potentially gotten the four years. But as this is like going months back, we talked about this where... Um, it was said that he's got bipolar disorder and post-traumatic syndrome for some reason, and like so because of that, it's way the judge kind of lessen lessen the, the the jail time. But whatever, I mean, at least I mean, even though it may, may not be as much as he deserved, at least he's still in jail and serving the time. Agree. So yeah, that was just a real quick thing. I just I saw that as like, oh well, at least he's still spending more time in jail. But you know, it's. It's one of those things. It's like it's like the the insanity plea, you know. Like I, I was crazy. It wasn't a sound mind, and then go through all these people. But a lot of these people are smart. I'm not saying like, obviously it's, you know, I just don't don't even want to go into the horrible stuff he's done. But there's people who've done much worse and gone away with it just because they may be uh, really really messed in the head and are capable of like just disgusting things. But a lot of them are smart and can pull it off and fool these guys. You know, as 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 brilliant and as smart as these uh, experts can be, you know, it's one of those things. There's always someone smarter. True. So that's the last thing to say in that because this is one thing we can go on forever about. But I just wanted to uh, throw that little part in just because I is I when I saw it pop up, I was like, oh, here we go. Like, what's next with this guy? So. <laughs> that that's done with that um i believe the show will be this week but uh neil young and jack white are gonna be uh are booked for uh, a joint appearance on tonight's show which as much as i'm not a big fan of jimmy fallon i'm gonna watch it for the musical part alone because uh neil young has just been making some new stuff he did some touring and uh jack white had just put out the pretty much quickest <laughs> album release ever <laughs> so and uh the song is called, uh, uh, I'm just not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but I think it's uh, Lazaretto. So it's it's a it's a really cool tune, but I mean, it'd be cool to see them together because uh, Jack White's very versatile in the different music he's come up with because he's done a whole bunch of different side projects after the White Stripes. and But he's, he's kind of a, kind of a, got of a bit, some, some hippie roots, we'll put it that way. So seeing him and Ewing together should be pretty interesting. Yeah, I will definitely have to 
DVR that. Very exciting. Neil Young is one of my favorites. He's an incredible artist. Uh, is there any word on what, are they going to collaborate on something new, one of their new tracks separately, or is they, are they going to do something old? I just glanced over briefly, but I think it's going to be collaboration of one of their new songs. Okay, awesome. I'm very excited. I kind of hope they do a riff of Old Man. That'd be really cool. Um, um, actually, you know what? Uh, I... Not too long ago, I finished a biography on Neil Young, and uh, he uh, initially it was kind of well, kind of funny. Uh, his his father thought he had written it about him, but huh? it's actually about uh, just uh, uh, a real good friend of Neil Young's, like way back in the day. And uh, I don't think he ever really told his father the song wasn't initially written about you; it was about this guy. <laughs> so just, there are just some similarities. That is very cool. I never knew that. Well, I, lo- I love my rock biographies. I, I finished that one probably about two or three months ago, but it was really cool. And uh, I just uh, finished the Kirk Bay one, Heavier Than Heaven. I just fin- finally finished that yesterday, actually. So that was a uh, that was a good read. I mean, it was it was one of those things. You know, it it got in depth, but not too in depth to the point where it's boring. Because okay. even though I like my rock biographies, like I only you know if if it's a boring read. I, I won't be able to get through it. I'll have to put it down. You know, like I'll, I'll have to find like hopefully a different biography that that was done better. Cause uh, one in particular, um, it was a bit of a struggle. This one I did kind of struggle through, but the first little bit was just there's just way way too much uh, um, in depth information that I don't think wasn't actually necessary to the biography. It was one was uh, done. It's called Catch a Fire. It was done on Bob Marley. And it was really good, but there was just way too much childhood info that wasn't necessary to the story. Oh, okay. At least, at least my my personal opinion. I got you. Aren't they making that into a movie? They're supposed to be. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure too many, too much what, what the details are yet. I haven't seen too much, and I like. I mean, the most recent thing I've seen was a uh, was a uh, uh, Andre three thousand uh, starring in a biopic on uh, Jimi Hendrix. That's right. That's right. So I'm not Getting sure. Too confused. I don't. Know. So I'm not sure when that's supposed to come out and when it's due because there was there were some uh, there were a few issues they couldn't use some songs they couldn't do it this way just because of uh, the Hendrix family surviving Hendrix family uh, saying well I know we're cool with the biopic but you can't use this you can't use this and blah blah like so it's it's almost like an unauthorized biography in some cases so I mean it'll the the facts will be there so they're not really going to stray from the actual facts but there's some stuff that obviously. They'd like to see in there, but they can't use it. So they're using like other songs from that time period that kind of kind of tie into uh, uh, the Hendrix era. Oh, that's really neat. And the two, uh, actually three other things. Uh, George Harrison, his uh, '62 Rickenbacker guitar is headed to auction. So that's uh, expected to fetch in the hundreds of thousands. And uh, the '62 Rickenbacker is a really cool guitar to begin with. And the fact George Harrison owned it, you know, it just makes it that, that much more uh, appealing. Granted, I'd, I'd never spend the kind of money for that sort of thing. I mean, it, it's nice to have, like, stuff that the musicians use, but, you know, to to a certain extent, you know, there's 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 a certain cutoff in price that I'm willing to spend. <laughs> right. What would be... Well, you don't have to tell me the number you'd spend on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, I mean, uh, so, but either way, I mean, uh, just another one of those things that's probably going to fetch a, a good chunk of money, so that was just cool to see. Um, the other thing, uh, well, one of the other things, just second to last thing here, uh, Billy Corgan uh, has asked Tommy Lee, uh, Billy Corgan being the Smashing Pumpkins and Tommy Lee being Molly Crew, asked uh, Tommy Lee to, to, to drum on some of uh, the new Pumpkin songs, which Billy Corgan calls uh, the collaboration Supersonic Pumpkins. <laughs> that's and, cool. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm not sure quite what to think. I mean, I like the old Smashing Pumpkins before they kind of like really kind of dissipated. And uh, there's did no Billy Corgan must still do it. So he got some uh, a new uh, people to be Smashing Pumpkins. I mean, all the power to him. But I've not really been a fan at all. It just it just to me it's just like you know now you just now you're just making music try to make money which they haven't done all that well in general i mean they've been touring but it's like oh great pumpkins now hey like before back in the day when they were the original pumpkins when it was uh uh darcy jimmy chamberlain and uh, james eon billy corgan 
that was cool. That was Pumpkins. Even when Darcy left and they replaced her with uh, Melissa Othmar, and Melissa Othmar actually played with a band Hole. Speaking of uh, Kirkby and Courtney Love, and she also did a solo album. And she's a very good bassist, so she was on the. Well, I think it was a, the very last album before they kind of stopped, and then Billy Corgan kind of reformed Pumpkins with different musicians. And uh, the album was called Machina, which is actually a pretty good album. And uh, so, yeah, now, and now they're doing this. And you know what? Um, I'm not a huge fan of Molly Crew, but I did read the Tommy Lee book, Tommy Land. It was actually a really good book. Really, really good. I was actually really impressed. Nice. And uh, he is he is a phenomenal drummer. I will give him that for sure. But fitting into what Billy Corgan's pumpkins are now, I'm not so sure. I the only thing I was thinking is like, man, like he's he's uh, just as good and better than their original drummer Jimmy Chamberlain. And I think, well, maybe with him coming in, maybe they might kind of kind of go kind of somewhat old school and kind of be a kind of heavier kind of good rock. So, you know. I, I'm my interest is a little bit peaked, so I'm kind of curious to see what they're going to come up with. I'm ex- I'm intrigued as well. And the only other thing, um, well, this was this was just kind of funny. Um, the Black Keys drummer uh, Pat Carney, uh, uh, pretty much. Well, it, the the title of the article says unleashes a fresh batch of Justin Bieber hate <laughs> because he's never been a fan of Justin Bieber like many people. And I I, sh- I I was trying to look it up and I, I couldn't find it. So I'll, I'll, if I can find the, the original quote from uh, what he said about probably about a year ago or so now. I mean, it was pretty funny, pretty funny, pretty pretty nasty. And this one, he's just kind of talking about uh, how uh, you know he, the he's just he was all pissy because he didn't win any awards at the Grammys and that sort of thing. And and uh, he got because he got questioned for it after after the show. And the funny thing is, in the article it says his wife tried to pull him away, but it didn't stop him. Because he happened. Really? Yeah. So that was that's the kind of uh, guy Pat Patrick Carney is. I mean, if you've like with the interviews they've done, like whether they're they were written or uh, you know uh, uh, live on air or TV, he's kind of a kind of a cynical guy. But the thing is, you know, he's he's upfront and open. You know, like and uh, uh, cause he, uh, besides Bieber, made fun of someone else in, uh, about, uh, about a year ago. And he goes, just up front, he goes, let me tell you, he goes, I'm a horrible drummer. I'll never claim to be a good drummer. Let's just get that off the bat first. But this guy is even worse. You know? <laughs> so, uh, at least he's, at least he's, he's being honest and telling you flat out, like in his mind, he sucks. So like, that was really honest. So yeah, so it's uh maybe kind of softens the blow a little bit, right? So he does. So he still looks like uh, still looks like a, a bit of a dick, but it's not not as bad, you know, because at least he's kind of justifying, saying, "Listen, man, I suck, but you." <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice preface. Well, that's right. So I mean, uh, it's it's always it's always funny. It's, it's not too often, but every once in a while there'll be an article with uh, Patrick Hardy talking talking uh, schma- smack about someone. So. And usually it's pretty justified and usually it's pretty funny. So, but it's not all the time things. So it's not like he's like, he's uh, constantly in the news and just giving himself a bad name. The black keys on top of that. Right. No, he's, he's uh from, like I said, the stuff I've seen, cause obviously I've never even met the guy, but from the, from the interviews I've seen on TV and the stuff I've read, he sounds like a pretty funny guy. He seems like a little bit cynical, but at the same time too, is it's, you know, it's makes for a good laugh. Absolutely. It's always kind of a laugh because it's so true, you know, when you laugh at something because it's just so true. That's kind of, I think, how he's, how his humor goes. Exactly. So, it, it was, like I said, it was funny. That caught my eye right away. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what's going on. Nothing else really too new, exciting, like, that at least sticks out in my mind, except for the one last thing, Britain, we'll get into your blogs. Uh, this past Wednesday, I believe it was, the Backstreet Boys were in town. Yay! Yeah, well, <laughs> it was funny just because the next morning, uh, the well, the rock station, they uh, they talked to a lot of people after the show. And of course, a lot of the a lot of the, a lot of the, there's like there's the range from like pretty much from like a five year old to like forty something years old, right? So in between, because pretty much that the Backstreet Boys, the, the people in there are now between thirty and forty years old, give or take a few years, maybe like late twenties. So. 
and talking to these people after the show and still just screaming and screaming and just ridiculous. I have to tell you that I'm not surprised because I think it was two, maybe three summers ago. It was before the Backstreet Boys started touring with New Kids on the Block. Uh, I went to go see them uh, live, oh. and it was the stuff that, you know, little girl streams are made of. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was a really great show. I know people make fun. They had some really hooky pop songs back in the day, and it felt like I was back in 2001 all over again. People were going crazy. It was awesome. I felt like I went into a time machine. Well, well, fair enough, but, but yeah, you just, hearing these women scream is like, holy crap, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it a, just, when I started hearing the songs, I was, I was back, and I'm not one of those people who screams particularly, I just applaud and I get really into it, but when they started seeing the one, and I'm sure a lot of Backstreet Boys fans listening right now, you know what I'm talking about, that was an amazing <laughs> moment. <laughs> It was. It was. It was. It was really powerful. And when I said "Backstreets were back," yes, I did. I sung along. I thought it was pretty powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and it started to rain. By the way, they, they're really consummate professionals because it started to rain really hard. And they said, "You know what, guys? It's raining, but we're not going anywhere." And they started dancing on chairs, and there was splashing, and women were just going crazy, hoping that they would splash water on them. It was awesome. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> All right. Um, one more thing. One more fun fun fact, and it's, it's just got to do with uh, uh, women screaming that sort of thing. Uh, when the Beatles were huge, a lot of shows it actually started to get worse and worse. The women and people in the crowd were screaming so loud they could barely hear themselves play. Wow. So that that's how loud it got. So I mean that that that's something been going on for years. But you just like when you hear it now, it's like oh god, it's like it's like it's like ear shattering. You know? Oh, absolutely! It's it's really upsetting. You have to be in a certain emotional place to be able to tolerate it. I can tolerate it um, okay at, a, at you know a concert, but when that happened um, during a Twilight movie, that was a little more than I could take. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a movie theater, guys. I mean, I just that really did bug me. Oh, I no, I I don't bug you. That would that would bug the hell out of me too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I just yeah, that was a, that was a fun little fact that they were in town, but uh, obviously not not a show. I was willing to cover. So there you go. Not not that right. I, not that I was offered to, mind you, but <laughs> but just just in general. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so now, Britt, let's get into your blogs, what you've been doing this week, and uh, what you got coming up. Uh, I think you lost you there, Britt. Oh. Hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. Okay, great. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a solar flare. <laughs> So this week I published the art a review of Amazing Spider-Man so everyone can go and enjoy that. I gave the film a 6.5 out of 10 and basically, you know, 5 being average, it was a point and a half above because of Emma Stone's performance and the stunning visual quality of the film. But other than that, very clunkily, you know, put together. I don't think clunkily is a word, but I just made it one. And... <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was, you know, it was not the best that it could be, especially when you have the original franchise still so fresh in, you know, my mind. I know the 10-year-olds who are in the theater don't even remember or know that that existed, but I do. I see feel really old, by the way, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, you know, it just didn't really compare. Um, so... Coming up next week, because I, I didn't really get a chance to publish a lot this week, uh, I went to see The Other Woman with Cameron Diaz and Leslie Mann. Have you seen the trailers for that? I have. I think I've seen a few previews of it. Okay. The trailers literally put all of the best stuff in the, to, the, to the trailer. Everything in the movie is um, you know waiting to get to those moments that they highlighted in the trailer. They gave it all away, basically. I was very disappointed. I think kind of looking at it as to why Nick Cassavetes directed it and he directed The Notebook and Alpha Dog, these are recent films, but he directed those kind of heavy dramas. And here right. with the comedy, it just really <laughs> fell flat. Well, that sucks. Yeah, I was so excited about it because I thought it was such a unique premise that yeah, you know, these women were going to become friends. 
Yeah, it looked like, I mean, from the previews, it did look like a, it could be really funny, but yeah, I mean, show the best yeah, part. Yeah, I was so. very disappointed. Well, that's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was so, and I was so, I was so amped to see it, and, you know, if you, do you remember the Cameron Diaz movie, The Sweetest Thing? Uh, you know what? I don't think I even ever saw that, to be honest with you. Okay, it was, that was a really good movie. I thought it was really funny, and Cameron Diaz and Christina Applegate really played well off of each other, and in this movie, Leslie Mann, who's mostly known for her Judd Apatow, she's married to Judd Apatow, and she's in a lot of his movies, um, they just really didn't click in terms of a duo. It seemed like, it, it just did not work at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they, then it just didn't work. Um, but I then I saw Need for Speed. Have you seen the trailer for that one? Oh, yes, I have. Okay, that was absolutely god awful. <laughs> uh, I started laughing. No offense to God, but <laughs> I started laughing in the movie. While and it was so weird because I was I was laughing, but the movie took itself very seriously. But then it was so campy that I thought it's not a serious drama. But there was a person applauding during certain parts of the film, so they really did enjoy it. So I guess it's hit or miss. Oh, fair enough. I mean, I just when I when I saw it, I wasn't I had really no interest to go and see it to begin with. So, I, yeah, I totally agree. You know, see, I love Cars, and I thought the the Fast and the Furious movies are great, but this, you know, this helps you really respect how good the Fast and the Furious movies are because this got it so wrong. It is really not that easy. I found out to make Cars about likable people who you know put high performance uh, cars to the test in these amazing races. Plus. The movie escalated drag, the whole street racing. It's very dangerous, and in the movie they showed people getting hit and stuff, but there were no real long-term consequences. It kind of glorified it, and I don't really feel comfortable, you know, putting that seal on it. Right. Well, fair enough. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I love Cars too, but even the Fast and the Furious, I mean, I just, like, I don't know, I just, I wasn't a really big fan of those either. Didn't you love the first one, though? Uh, I don't know. I just no, not really. I just I couldn't get in them. I don't know why. Like, so I don't. I, I get that. So I don't. I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, some of the cars were cool, but I was like, you know what? I I can see better cars somewhere else. So. I hear you. Yeah, so. this is not the best thing for for car. cars. Did not have their very best moment close up in this film. Um, but I also have a thing about Vampire Academy coming up. Not the show Vampire Diaries, but the movie Vampire Academy. And TV report cards for Vikings, The Tomorrow People, which was sadly canceled this week. R.I.P. Uh, yes. um, yeah, I'm, I was disappointed. I thought that show got really good. And Bates Myself, which is not canceled, will be returning next year. I know, a whole year to have to wait on that one. Uh, so I'll have a full wrap-up of that. <laughs> <laughs> I will miss it. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Um, that's, that's one show i got to catch up on, but... Yeah, you know, there's just like a whole bunch I gotta catch up on. Just matter of trying to find the time to do everything. So, yes, but exactly. I'll I'll try and once once I do, then we should be able to talk a little bit more in depth about it in bits and pieces. Great, I would really. I think that would be awesome. But that's um that's pretty much all the time we have for today. So we will be back next Saturday with uh a, a hopefully a discussion about a, a really good finale for Arrow and uh. Some other th some other stuff. Uh, we'll see what goes on during the week this week, as far as like rock news goes, and just stuff. Maybe just like little uh, minor, uh, we'll call it irritations and stuff throughout the week. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, not 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 too many this week. Uh, the, only, the only thing that uh, I had to compl well, I don't random about complain about whatever whatever you want to call it is people riding their bicycles at night, especially at four in the morning. Gotta wear either have lights on that bike or something light, not a black t-shirt, because I don't realize I'm almost on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it gosh, that is so freaking annoying. It drives me nuts. Like the other day on the way to on the way to work, it's almost on top of the guy until I realized that there's a guy in a bike, he's in all black, and there's nothing on the bike at all. It's like, man, I can't even see you. And it, 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 they almost act like you're. How do you not see them? Like I'm not psychic. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, yeah, it would. It just, yeah, that that that's the annoyance of the week is is uh, bikers who wear nothing but like dark clothes, especially at four in the morning. I mean, it's not light out at all. I mean, like, and really, even even with lights in the car, it's hard to see when it's all black mixed in with black. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, that was a good scene in this movie, Need for Speed. They they had a guy and he 
drives past this bicycle really quickly, this guy on his bicycle, and this guy on the bicycle, all of a sudden, he starts pedaling really hard. Like, he can compete with the speed of the car, and that is just so quintessential bicycle, people. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> You'll see that all the time. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that, that, that was only kind of minor, we'll call it pet peeve of the week. Um, so, yeah, and so uh, we'll be back next Saturday with a whole bunch of new stuff for you. So, until then... We'll talk to you soon with tonight at 8 p.m. for a new episode of New Music Saturday. So until then, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for listening. Bones out. Peace.